Hello there and welcome to Revna Den. I'm Michael Hassenfang and today is episode three called A Good Tongue Lashing, which is yet another controversial topic I think I will be bringing up in the beginning episodes to really just hone in on what it is I'm trying to explain during these times and to get the most extreme out and slowly bring it down to a level where you can just breathe it in, be like, okay, <clears throat> we got through all the hard stuff. Now this is our calling on what we need to do. We got a little bit more focus. And I'm bringing up the more controversial, uh, sorry, controversial stuff first because of just the necessity of what's going down. It seems things are getting ramped up a lot faster in the world today. <clears throat> and... Uh, in a sense, prophetically speaking, or biblically speaking, I don't really know how much time I have left or how much time we all have in this season to really wake people up. So it's like, we need to get the bang out first and then whittle it down to, okay, now that I shook you awake and got your attention, now we can slowly start to simmer down and be like, okay, this is what you guys can start doing. These are the things we need to look out for. So. Um, if the last episode was pretty intense, I apologize, you know, or, or very just way out there left field compared to what you're normally used to hearing from biblical scripture. Um, that being, <clears throat> excuse me, on uh, the dead in Christ being raised first, and that was a topic on the last session, the how soon is now, how long is then topic, where we were going into Christ coming back to raise the dead first and us witnessing it and then we who are alive and remain will be caught up in the clouds with them and that's an at a later date and it's just from the way that was specified in the Bible but also based on a lot of the topics that I've been hearing from various prophets like Shirley Lice and um, Midnight Cry with Deborah few others but mainly those two. And just rehashing a little bit on that, y y why would it be phrased like that if we did go at the same time they did in the blinking of an eye? Because <clears throat> if the dead in Christ rise first and we follow in that nanosecond later, I mean, technically speaking, we all go at the same time then. But it says they, the dead in Christ, rise first. Then we who are alive and remain it's like, well, if we remain, we're obviously not going at the same time they are. <clears throat> and this is a little different than just people passing on and going up to heaven spiritually. This is in reference to the last trumpet blowing and the dead in Christ in their glorified bodies. They will be coming down, taking their glorified bodies and going up in their new like physical and spiritual unification of what we call the glorified bodies. And I think that's in part to Christ also coming and dispensing the glory on those who are alive, the upper room scenario where the flames are rising on the heads and they're speaking in tongues and they're healing the sick and they're raising the dead and all chaos ensues to the secular world when that happened. And I think that's going to be on a worldly scale. But as that's happening, the dead in Christ go up. We physically, literally see it. Um, we watch them rise. Which is why I think there's going to be a lot of confusion and sorrow because everyone will be like, wait, wait, take us with you. Why, why are we left here? They would literally think that they're left behind, so to speak. And it's not that. It's we have this last uh, season harvest to get into. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm a bit winded today. I was very busy at work and I'm kind of overheated. You could kind of tell maybe I, I'm a little sweaty, but I came home from work. I ate really fast and I'm like, I need to get this done today. Um, instead of on Saturday morning like I usually do. It's Friday night right now on the 18th. And one of the reasons why is because I'm studying for my license uh, for a hip and Medicare Advantage for insurance because I'm an insurance broker as well as a banker. Um, so I got that to do this weekend. Um, but also because the 18th is a good friend of mine, Naomi Zeit. It's her birthday. Happy 23, Naomi. I just wanted to get that on. Of course, it's probably um, it's probably the 19th where you are right now, being in Germany. So, but it's still the 18th here, so I'm still celebrating. I got my coffee. 
I'm a little winded from the day. It's a little bit more than just being winded. It's a, a little bit of oppression and depression and stuff like that, which I will be getting into in a different episode later on called They Will Catch Up. And it's, um, it's, it's based on the heaviness that people are going through and the isolation and loss of friends and stuff like that. So been kind of <clears throat> past couple of years, I notice I've been breathing heavier. What some people say slain in the spirit where you're just like, <sighs> just worn out all the time, heavy breathing, just exhausted, feeling pressed. Um, I've kind of been like that. I've been fighting it, but I've also, I don't know, I'll get into that in a different episode. Right now, the second thing we're talking about after Christ raising the dead is one of our actions that we are supposed to be doing right now and also during this last harvest season to energize ourselves and that is speaking in tongues and it is a thing that seems very you either like the idea or you don't like the idea and I was one who never liked the idea I thought the idea of speaking in tongues was really out there <clears throat> and I also thought that maybe when they were speaking in tongues when they were referencing it in the Bible is what I mean, that they were speaking it in a language that other people can hear, you know, and it's, oh, they're speaking German, oh, they're speaking French. Well, we will see that that's not what it was. <clears throat> Paul goes into this as well as with Acts in the upper room. Um, now that I think about it, I didn't pull any verses for Acts today, but I do know what was going on when they were speaking it. Uh, but first and foremost, I'm going to get into the whole idea of what is tongues. And I think what it is, uh, well, first, let's read what Paul says. That's probably a good place to start. And there's the, the controversy that we have with speaking in tongues is that people think that you only speak it when the Holy Spirit gives it to you, and you only do that when you're in church, and you're the only person that can speak it, and when somebody else is, you know, or, or when you or somebody else is speaking in tongues, there needs to be somebody else to translate what you are speaking, and that is the only time you speak in tongues. It's just all of a sudden, like a program comes on, and you start, you stand up, and you start speaking in tongues, and then somebody else over here goes, I know what he said, and he starts speaking that and answering to the church. <clears throat> That's it. That's all. That's the only time you speak in tongues, which is not true. In fact, it's just the opposite of that. Um, 1 Corinthians 14 says, Pure love and desire spiritual gifts, but especially that you may prophesy. Oh, I'm sorry. <clears throat> I, I, I started that wrong. <laughs> Pursue love and desire spiritual gifts, but especially that you may prophesy. For he who speaks in a tongue does not speak to men, but to God. For no one understands him. However, in the spirit he speaks mysteries. But he who prophesies speaks edification and exhortation and comfort to men. He who speaks in a tongue edifies himself. But he who speaks prophecies edifies the church. I wish all of you spoke with tongues, but even more that you prophesied. For he who prophesies is greater than he who speaks in tongues, unless indeed he interprets that the church may receive the edification. So you see, you got a big bulk there to chew on. And what Paul is saying is that tongues are not just for speaking in the church <clears throat> blatantly out and one person to just, you know, uh, interpret what that person is saying and that's the only time. Actually, speaking in tongues is for self-edification. It's for the growth of the spirit. It's to put out utterances, whether in a language or even groaning, because the Bible speaks of that too. You the groaning, just a uh, exhaustion of groaning and just guttural moan that comes out that the Holy Spirit himself even speaks through in that because he understands the guttural utterance. When you need to speak stuff that you can't even explain in words, or you're too worn out, or you're too exhausted, or you just need an empowerment, you start speaking this language and you do it in a way that edifies only the Spirit. <clears throat> Again, dryness. I'm in Idaho. It's dry here. 
And Wisconsin, it wasn't this bad. <laughs> I, I live in a world of dryness. And before here, I lived in Redding, California. So it's it's been worlds of dry on my throat. And all I do is cough from that and from, you know, smoking in my 20s. So, um, but um, forgive me if I cough a lot. The guttural utter utterances or the speaking that comes out, I think, is in a sense the wave that the Holy Spirit rides in order to get out what he needs to say in the spirit to edify yourself or sometimes to edify other people like if you're speaking in a church or if you're praying over somebody and you speak these these tongues out you know the Holy Spirit may partake in that and when you go back to the Tower of Babel and everyone spoke one language and God said I'm going to confuse their language and he gave tongues to everyone Certain people understood what other people were saying. Other people, including family members, did not. They didn't understand what was going. So everyone parted their own ways. They were forced to go into their own tribes and scatter out because they were the only ones that could speak to each other and understand what each one was saying. <clears throat> so it does kind of make me think, how many languages are there? How many languages could there have been when God dispersed these languages, these tongues on the Tower of Babel? and remove them from just the one solo language that was universal across the planet. And I would think that there's an infinite number of sounds. I mean, you think of the pitches and and just the dialect and the utterance and just the everything that comes in with sound, everything that comes in with language, <clears throat> you really could have an infinite amount. And is that what tongues are? <clears throat> People say, you know, to, to speak in the language of angels. And I, I, I personally think that there is a language of angels, but I think language of angels and tongues are two different things. Because if there is a specific language of angels, just like there's English language down here, or German or French or Russian, so on and so on. Sooner or later, when you start hearing this language, you will be able to decipher and interpret and write a book on how to speak this language. It'd be like writing a book on Klingon. You know, it's just like, oh, somebody made it up and somebody can interpret words. And sooner or later, you're going to have your own your, your own dictionary and your own thesaurus on, on how to speak this language. The same thing goes with the angelic and spiritual realm. So I don't think that's tongues because tongues are supposed to be made to confuse people, not just confuse other humans, but I think confuse other spirits as well. There is something that was mentioned in Revelation, and I'm going to bring it up here, which sort of specifies on it, but not really. I, I think it sort of pokes lightly at this idea, and it has to do with you getting uh, a, a, a stone um, during Revelation. Once you get up to heaven, God is going to give you, uh, in fact, it's right here, I'll just read it. We see that those of us who overcome and enter into uh, God's kingdom will receive a white stone with our name on it, which is known only by ourselves and God. This is a language that we personally, or whether it's written down or whether uh, it's it's in phonics too, like it, it's, it's a word that you can read, but also a word that God will speak to you, your own private name makes me think that tongues are your own language or the language God gave you, the spiritual language that you have between him and yourself and no one else can speak it. Now, there may be certain sounds and like phonics and stuff like that and um, dialects in tongues that overlap. I, I hear a lot of people um, when I listen to people speak in tongues, they, they use this little bubba bo shanda, it's, or, you know, or chakra zidendra kundra. You know, it's like there's certain sounds, chakra and bobo, and uh, things that, that, that overlap. Um, and I hear that, and I'm like, these guys are all saying the same thing. Are they being taught to say this? Or have they just manually did this on their own as they increased with speaking in tongues on their own? Because it does, it is a practicing. The Holy Spirit does give you the utterances, you know, or the, the the way to speak, but you need to start off almost as if you were a baby and you are learning a language. And <clears throat> I'm wondering if these cross words actually have the same meaning <clears throat> or if they're just the same sounds that, that just 
come out kind of like guttural utterances. We all go from time to time, but they might mean different things. How does that work in the spirit? Could it be that the Holy Spirit, when we speak, when we are allowing to do that language and speaking that tongue out to us or out to the open to God, really, or to ourselves for self edification, is he using that language to interpret or is he using it to, again, as I said, ride the wave? There's different pitches, there's different uh, sound waves, there's there's different uh, octaves, you, you know, that, that we, we all give. And it could be that where the language is hidden within that, or it could be separate since it is the Holy Spirit and it is a language that is spiritual, that when the Holy Spirit speaks through our sound, we are edified, but it's not from the words we are saying. It's from what we are allowing him to put out through us, through our breath, with the breath of life to speak into it. And only the spirit hears what the Holy Spirit is saying. <clears throat> these are all just questions I have. These, these are not really things that I'm, uh, I'm like yeah, saying this is all this. This is how tongues work. Um, it's not. I'm just I'm trying to bring up scenarios and questions. Not just for myself, um, and maybe not even just for you watching, but questions for the church, because I think the church has a lot of questions on what tongues are. And I think a lot of people don't do it because they don't ask these particular questions. And they don't read deep enough into the Bible to understand that, yes, you can speak in tongues. In fact, the most time that you do speak in tongues is when you're away from people, not with people. You use it for yourself. You use it for your own spiritual edification to the, so the Holy Spirit can speak to you as you're allowing him to use your breath of life to speak out these words. It, you know, it's used in prayer as well, too. Um, and there are times where you speak, the Holy Spirit wants you to speak in your tongue so he can give an utterance, so he can speak to the church. And he's just using you as the mouthpiece to ride that wave and speak it out so someone else can hear and interpret what they're saying. And let me give you an example of this because I, I feel personally that I have experienced this. Is when I was going to Calvary Chapel in Madison, Wisconsin, and a person named Dave came over and he was teaching us how to speak in tongues. Now, don't take that the wrong way because I know where you're going with that. Oh, you're gonna to go to school to speak in tongues? It's like, no, no, he was just, he was showing us as I did with you right now, biblically, how to interpret tongues, how to use it, um, why it's there, what it's for, and not to teach us what to say, but how to get in to saying that's speaking in tongues, you know, slowly just lay in bed, you know, and you know, just start rolling your tongue. I just let it loose and then just start speaking slowly and surely. And sooner or later, that language will start coming to you and it, it, it'll expand and it'll change. And I've, I've noticed that as I progressed speaking in tongues for this last 15 years now? Yeah, 15 years about I've been speaking in tongues. And it started off almost like the Bobo Shundai or Chakra, and I was using a lot of S's, and you know, it almost sounded Arabic in a sense. Um, but as I progressed, the language that I had matured, it seemed, and it seemed like my vocabulary got stronger in that, even though it's technically not a vocabulary, it's really hard to say. But as he was teaching us this, and as he was telling us, you know, how to, how to start off, how to, you know, just let God you know, use you to, to, to be your mouthpiece. Um, he prayed over us and he prayed over us in tongues. And he's like, well, I, I would like to speak to you in tongues. I'm like, okay. And I was with my friend Alex at the time. So we were sitting there praying, my eyes were closed and he started speaking in tongues. And all of a sudden, as he was speaking tongues, his, his vocabulary changed, his dialect changed. It's like Dave was not speaking Dave. He was very, it was it was a different sound. You could tell it was God, you know, my children. And as, as he was speaking to me, I gave you all all the weapons and all the utilities that you need to, you know, use to um, to move forward in your calling. Man, it's been 15 years. I wish I could remember this really good. But I almost wanted to look at him because I could I could hear what he was saying. I understood what he was saying, and I almost wanted to look up and over at him to see if he was still speaking in tongues or if he was still moving his mouth and speaking this language. But I heard in my head as God was talking to me, "Don't look." 
And I'm just thinking, what? why? Why can't I leave? He's like, it would ruin your faith then. Just believe in what I am telling you. And so I just, I just kept going. It's, it's like, I, I, I wanted to look, but I just, I, I, you know, after that, I'm like, I, I know I shouldn't, it, it would actually, it would not be of faith for me to go and be a doubting Thomas and check out to see what he's saying. But if it were true, you know, and I believe it was, but, and uh, I'm just saying that if he, he was still speaking in tongues and I was hearing the word of God speaking to me, then that's kind of an example of how tongues would work is that it's not just a feeling that you have in your stomach. Oh, the Lord is, I got butterflies in my stomach. I understand all the blah, 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 blah that this guy is doing. And I think I know what it's going to say. No, you actually hear the Holy Spirit speaking to you and you, you can, you can interpret really easily. Um, and uh, man, I do wish I can remember. I do feel bad about that because I know some of you are going to be done. Well, well, if it's the word of God, you'll remember everything he said. Well, not particularly because I was more interested in wanting to look over. I was more paying attention more to that. And that's why God said, stop looking and just listen to what I have to tell you. So I missed kind of half of what he was saying, which is kind of funny. But the point of the matter is, is that it did stick with me. And that I did remember it and that it's it's like it's it was embedded in me as one of those things is like, OK, this this is something that I, I know this is happening and I can't be a doubting Thomas. And I just have to just keep going with what he's he's telling me, which was more or less just the initiation of the equipping of tongues and to, you know, everything is there for you. The arm of God's there for you. All you got to do is ask for it every day. You know, you, you need it every day like a soldier. You know, you got to put on the armor, strap it on go out to battle you know but you got to ask for the armor please give me my daily armor so i could overcome the day you know and you know what i'm totally sorry for those of you who are joining me i got so enthralled with speaking in the tongues and giving out birthday wishes and <laughs> some of this stuff <clears throat> it's been a long day i knew i should have did this on saturday but i had to do a friday night and i'm half awake so I forgot to pray and I forgot to do communion with all of you. So if any of you still wish to do communion with me or just watch me be, you know, wasting your time for clickbait, <laughs> watch me take communion, go right ahead. We need to remember why we do this. And again, I try to do it every day, though there's times I fail all the time, but I've been trying to do it more and more to where, uh, we're gonna need it during this time you know I need to do it to stay focused all spiritually I mean not not in real life because that that screws me up enough but spiritually try to stay focused and remember what he's doing what he did for us and what's gonna be coming so And forgive me for not starting out in prayer. And I'm new to this. And I've been kind of, I've been kind of silent with the Lord lately as well too. I know I shouldn't. Um, I used to speak every day during my cave seasons, talk to Him, activate, declare, decree, pray for certain people constantly, all the time, nonstop. To the point that it was just even when God told me to stop, I kept doing it. And it just uh, almost wrecked me in a sense because I wouldn't rest when he told me to rest. And now that I'm over exhausted and doing this constant uh, slain in the spirit feeling and just need to be revived and ushered in I, uh, to his presence more, I, I've, I've noticed I've been slacking in actually speaking to him. So I feel I should do that now and pray for you guys as well too. So Heavenly Father, these episodes are here not as a way to indoctrinate anyone, but to open up their eyes to question your word, to look into it, to get a different perspective so that they can be awake and aware to what is entering into this new season. This last harvest call you have for us, this turning of the tables, uh, which would be greater than any of us could ever have dreamed but before this happens there's going to be a darkness and many will have to 
Many, many are going to be shook awake by this darkness. It's why you're allowing it to happen. It's why the world is going darker and darker and is going to get exponentially worse, almost to the point that there is no hope. In fact, safe to say that there is no hope left until you arrive and flip the tables and let people know who you are. And as odd as it may seem, I'm actually looking forward to those dark days just to give a sign of something, just to let me know that we're on the right path so that I can see the people wake up so that us, our trailblazers, the, the pioneers, the path setters, the ones who were in the cave season, the ones who are prepared and ready for this can give an answer for those who have questions during this time. Stop taking pictures of their pets and being, you know, snapshots of their food and, you know, their bike rides and just wake up, wake up to what is going on, wake up to the pure evil that is is happening these days. The people that don't care about you one bit, don't care about anybody on this planet. They want them either enslaved or dead. They want to annihilate our true president, either lock him up for all eternity until his death or, or kill him outright. And with all the other coups and killings that are going on across this planet with other leaders that are trying to do the right thing, Lord, we, we need you now more than ever. And it's time to wake these people up and please help lead me in this to give good answers, even when I'm not awake, even when I'm just half out of it, because I know I need to do these. And I know people are eager to look, look for these answers and hopefully they'll get some sort of nugget of truth even if it's like one minute out of one hour of me talking, that they get something from it and that they become closer to you, find out who you are and become part of your family, your adopted children and co-heirs into your kingdom. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. Tongues. <laughs> I kind of left off in, in the middle of that before I'd, I realized I needed to do all that stuff. So again, forgive me for that. Um, yeah, edification for tongues. My girls are running back and forth. I can hear them pouncing around. If you guys do, I'm sorry. But uh, yes, self-edification with tongues. That is the main purpose of tongues. <clears throat> and my advice to you is to do what Dave told me. And, and that is just, th this isn't a proclamation. You don't need to go down the street waving a flag and speaking in tongues and at the loudest, you know, screaming at the top of your lungs with, with this. It's... um. Just lay in bed. Just start rolling your, your your mouth around. Pray first. I mean, be like, God, use me. Speak to me. Let me get used to the language that you are trying to give me, that you are trying to give each individual person that is out there. That's why he calls, you know, he calls it tongues and not tongue. It's not like a singular sound, a singular voice language. It's your own language between you and God that you are speaking. It's it's just your your own voice. And with that, in combination to the Holy Spirit to ride the wave of your sound through the breath of life so that he can give the utterances and doc declarations that, that he wants through you. And um, the more you progress through that, the more natural it'll flow. And it'll get to the point that you would, like me, there's a lot of times I'm just... I'm just in the shower at night and I'm trying to give declarations and decrees, but I'm doing it through the tongue because I'm just so tired and so worn out. I just, after three years of praying for the same thing over and over and over again, it just seems that it's, it's just not working, you know, or maybe I'm, I feel I'm praying the wrong way, or maybe I'm just impatient and not waiting on God's time for it to actually happen, but still. It's good to pray in the tongue so that you can get the declaration from the Holy Spirit himself, but also become self-edified uh, through the speaking of tongue, because you need edification yourself. If you were like me, where I was praying less in tongues and going on for three years in this spiritual battle, fighting it myself without God in it, and him telling me to stop and I just keep going, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty battle-weary, like exceedingly battle-weary worn out, exhausted, these heavy breaths, that's not normal for me. This is just, and I'm not, you know, it's not like I'm 300 pounds either. I'm just, just all the time, every day, every day, like almost every minute I'm doing that, just weary. And I need to listen to when the Lord speaks to me. And you do too. 
but you also need to speak out what he wants you to say even if you don't understand it just start speaking in tongues get used to it get used to that vocabulary get used to building it up because you will find edification through that you'll find a strength and a build up in it you know and soon you will be able to start speaking it when praying to others and even at others whether it's through oppression or possession or people that need uh, help in health or for finances or just daily struggles in life um or just out of just plain old praise and worship Bible speaks when you start speaking in praise and worship in tongues that's the best remedy for you and I'm kind of um, one of those people that needs to listen to my own advice because I don't think I've ever done that oh okay no he's reminding me once I did it thanks yeah when I was working for Little Caesars Pizza I went outside and I any time that I could get outside and do some shaker boarding which is the stupidest job on the planet um, I just find it useless but it was beneficial for me then because I was out on the street there was no one around except for cars going by so they couldn't hear me so I was just practicing in tongues and just speaking out I couldn't really tell you if it was just nonsensical talk to him or if it was actually praise or worship I kind of felt like it was praise or worship I was just speaking to him to try and give him some sort of like glory or, or communication or you know just an utterance to him so yeah I forgot about that um, but I need to do that more especially now with all the battling that we've been doing I've been praying in tongues less and it's uh, just recently I've kind of thought maybe I should do that a little more because I think that's the Holy Spirit saying hey uh, you you want some of this to go down you might want to have me come work through you and you need to allow me to come in and work through you so start speaking in that and it's not like your own language the actual human language that we speak whether it's you know whatever nation you're from English Germany France Russian it's just he works that way too but it's the allowance of the utterance that you give in the spirit to make yourself look like a fool <laughs> that I think that God really shines you know the the foolishness of God is greater than the wisdom of man and I think that works the other way too you know sometimes the best way to work for God is to act like an idiot and to speak in that language for him to start giving declarations or decrees and be a prophet anytime he gives you a word a dream a vision declare it speak it to the people I'll get into that one later too on some of the visions and dreams that I've had there's some small teeny tiny speaking that he gave to me but it was more inquiries answers to inquiries that that, that I had it wasn't any proclamation he was given to me go out and tell this to the people I I don't think I've had that yet apart from um, you know the the idea to make these videos I think he was trying to nudge me and say hey maybe you should start this up even though I personally th think I sound like a complete idiot and I don't know what I'm doing and I'm not writing down any notes really apart from some Bible verses here and there um, I'm sort of clueless I'm just sort of rambling on on all this what something tells me somebody somewhere is getting a little bit of this and they're they're like oh okay it's starting to make a little bit more sense now and you can use those little nuggets it's the little jigsaw puzzle pieces that you need that's the one thing I found out when getting into theology and apologetics and listening to various pastors is to just you you take all the meat you spit out the bones but every now and then you you will find you'll find pearls in those oysters you'll find the puzzle pieces and everybody has a piece to the puzzle and you just put those pieces in every time you find those golden moments you start putting it in and a picture starts to form and you start to understand this picture a lot more even though I can't express it all that much to you right now <laughs> so like I'm still putting my puzzle pieces together but I'm trying to give you the nuggets that I found and hopefully they will be useful to you so try and speak in tongues as much as you can uh, again it's it's not it's not a school you know it's not like you're going to Bethel to learn how to speak in tongues you just start moving your mouth and give utterances you know think 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 on the Lord when you do it and he will guide you and learn teach you how to speak and 
I'm sure there will be times where the Holy Spirit will want you to speak in your language, in, in your tongue, so that you can give proclamations to others. Whether they're there or not, whether it's for healing somewhere else, you know, whether it's for some sort of service you're trying to give to them, or whether you're speaking to a whole church and giving a prophetic word. I've seen that done before, too. Uh, pastors or random people would just come up and speak. Someone else way over here would, would give the word. Yeah, it seems, it seems to work. I mean, you know, I'm, I'm sure there's plenty of people who are sketchy, and I'm one of those people, too. Like, okay, this person spoke, and this person gave an answer. What makes them what makes you think they didn't just get together before the service and hash all this out you know and i think that's where faith comes in faith and also if it's prophetic words usually more times than not when it comes to pass which plenty of times i've seen that happen too it's like okay i guess he spoke a word they interpreted it it came to pass seems legit you know Unless the people where it came to pass were in on it too, but I highly doubt some people across the world are in on that word. So just learn to speak, take authority on it. I guess uh, if there's anything here that, that I can do when I speak, um, I don't know, should I? <laughs> it's like, is there anything that I'm going to be saying right now that anyone's going to hear when I speak? Sundar Kandrishi Kanado Kambra, Tindra Kansinder Kanbrutu Shek and the Kambriti, Aura Shakandra Kamurka Sandra Kadoyder, he, Nomur Kamur Katandra, Perishana Kandrukin at Guru, Abra Serandra Kerashakandri, Kamuprukamata Tas, Tindro Kamar Katandra, Sakandra Perisha Tendro, Katandro Pandarashakanetro, Kandri Pintain, Diri Kanshantio with the Dambra Timon Kanase. Nindra Kanrotra Parashe Tekandra Pataya. The Kambra Semi, the Kadra Shetudra Pata. Nindra Tramamra Setindra Kampate. You start speaking like that. Start speaking to yourself like that. Start speaking uh, to the Lord like that when you're alone. See if you get edification. See what builds up. See if <sighs> the size and the strength that you were losing. Is built up you know or that energy is removed from you which seems that uh, seems that the uh, heaviness that I have is gone now yeah so that's interesting not taking deep breaths anymore so thank you Lord stuff like that so there now you got an answer so <laughs> And you need to do this every day, yeah, um, especially if you're battle weary, like I am. If you're fighting and constantly praying and constantly forcing yourself to speak on behalf of other people or certain certain uh, president, friends and family member, situations, jobs, finances, everything that you can think of, and you're starting to get a little weary, um, just yeah, just just petition to the Lord. Speak in your normal language if you have to, but I would highly encourage tongues. And when we start getting into this end season time, when it starts to get really dark, now would be a good time to start practicing with tongues so that you can build yourself up for the times that are going to be coming at hand. Because it's going to be getting pretty close uh, soon. It's, it's, it's coming. It's right around the pen from what a lot of the prophets are saying. It's going to get pretty wild. I do have book recommendation before I forget because I'm very forgetful today again it was a long hot disgusting day at work not to, uh, not to say that I hate my job I actually love my job it's a new banking job I really do like it but man I was pretty worn out so I would recommend Real Marriage by Mark Driscoll there was another book that Mark Driscoll recommended when he was doing his lecture series on this book and it's buried way at the bottom of my library over here amongst a bunch of rubble and I couldn't get to it. So I'm like, well, Mark Driscoll it is. This is the next one that I would recommend after that book. <laughs> so he's really good. He, I just finished up a service with him, a lecture series called New Days Old Demons. And it's about the book of Elijah and how we're entering into this Elijah, uh, <laughs> Elijah season, which I will also cover on another episode of mine farther down the road near the end called the days of Elijah. So 
Um, yeah, it's this one's really good if you are single. If you're married too, I definitely recommend this book. But if you're single, you you really need this book, and you definitely need the book he recommended. Maybe on my next round, I'll pull that one out for you. Um, it does kind of help to give you an idea of what to look for when you're entering into a marriage, looking for a husband, looking for a wife. You just don't want to head out to the bars. I mean, you know, I suppose sometimes you might be a good spouse there, but um, it's it's more based on godly unification to what marriage is and what you should look for in a husband and a wife to make it last longer and how to be that good spouse for them. So. I was very, very appreciative of that book um, and the one before that too, which I'll try and take out for the next episode, which was just mind blowing. I, I could see why he recommended it. It was really good. Um, and for the prophet or person of the week, I'm going to recommend, as I did last week with Watchmen on the Wall, this one is called Elijah Streams. Um, they are the longer version of Watchmen on the Wall. Watchmen on the Wall is a little snippets, like five, ten minutes, and he gives off good words and stuff like that from various prophets. This one is interviewing those prophets, and it just goes on and on and on. It's like an hour, hour and a half, sometimes almost two hours, but you get really good information, scriptural knowledge, theology, apologetics, words for today, news for today prophetic words for today it's it's quite amazing uh, it's not just uh prophets but it's patriots too they have people like mike lindell go on there roger stone um i think yeah i think they had eric trump on there as well too um just a whole bunch of random people it's it's a great show to watch i've been since starting this bank job I've been missing almost every single episode, and it sucks because I really liked watching that show. And I got about three weeks of stuff to catch up on. So, yeah. Um, but I still highly recommend it. Um, I'll put that down in the link below, too. Is there anything else I'm forgetting right now? Not really. I wasn't too sure on where to go with this tongues uh, topic. I just know that when reading those scriptures i think we have a very bad interpretation or idea of what tongues are and there's <clears throat> a lot of good christians out there uh spiritual warfare christians who don't even speak in tongues they just i don't know what it is they, they just they refuse to do it they think it's you know um i don't want to say a joke but just maybe even charlatan stuff or you know just like super charismatic like it's it's only for the loonies over there but the bible specifically speaks about it like really hardcore like this is one of the gifts of the spirit this is tongues and about 80 percent of the church is bashing it excuse me i'm burping my coffee so i think we need to get back into tongues even as sketchy as i was on the topic and and now doing it and seeing how it works we need to focus more on it. Paul said it, you know, I wish all of you spoke in tongues and even more so prophesy. Like not only are we supposed to be speaking in tongues, we're supposed to be prophesying. And it's nice to see a lot of these prophets crawling out of the woodworks within the last three years. Start off with me first in cat care and then Robin Bullock, I believe, uh, Hank Kuhneman, those were the first ones, Timothy Dixon and Julie Green and slowly but surely all these prophets one by one started off on their own but sort of you know, conglomerated into this giant ball of prophets that are now just speaking together all the time and they're doing revival festivals and uh, interviews with one another and they're traveling the united states and some of the other countries all over the place so sorry the door was opening there so but uh yeah, and, and to see them be unified together is really cool. So I would recommend starting with Elijah's streams on that so you could get used to seeing some of these prophets and some of these patriots speak uh, either during the interviews or together. 
it's it's quite interesting and it'll get you prepared for what is coming get you an idea of what is coming as well too so i guess that's it heavenly father thank you for this time and i hope somebody got uh, at least one nugget if not a bunch more and that they're slowly waking up to what is going on that they're prepared and equipped for the days ahead that they find you jesus christ uh, make them make him your uh, their lord and savior and find you in the holy spirit and become one of your children in jesus name we pray amen and i'm sorry again if i see my brain is just out there i'm just so exhausted but i knew i need to get this video done before the weekend because i got a long weekend of studying ahead of me then it's back to normal work so, <laughs> so wish me luck pray for me on that to give me energy uh, and to keep these videos going on the weekends because i do want to get them out to you even if it is a bunch of jarbled nonsense and I hope the jarbled nonsense confuses the enemy, but also wakes up a few others who need to come to Christ. So until next week, God bless, um, stay in the faith, and I'll talk to you soon. Much love.